Do you know what time it is? It's time to play in the garden. We'll explain next on Garden Time. Welcome to Garden Time, and we're in the location where they are actually putting the floats together for the Rose Festival Grand Floral Parade happening today. I'm standing next to Edna, who works for Fred Meyer Jewelers, and she takes a week's vacation off to volunteer down here. She's actually putting this sign together with grains of rice one at a time. Even the sign we're holding, all of the back and the sides of it are onion seeds. In fact, later in the show, I'll be talking with Kendra about how these beautiful floats get put together in one week. We're also going to be taking you to a garden with a working railroad. But first, our monthly tips with Jan McNeilan. Well, we are here with Jan McNeilan for some wonderful tips of this month. And I have to say, I, I'm torn between how I should feel about this I know. <laughs> I mean, I know. I've sort of projected bad juju on this, well, it but it's seem not to working. It. <laughs> no. uh, it actually had, this is the Meyer lemon that I didn't expect to live through the winter, and then I cut it back, and it lived through the winter, and then it put out a whole new lot of new growth, and then it also had some scale on it, but I can't even find any scale now. So we'll just keep following it along and see what it does. Clearly it wants to survive. <laughs> uh, yeah, it does. It, that, that's, that's So what obvious. should we be thinking about now in the garden? Well, um, one thing is osmocote that people don't realize that that's the pearlized fertilizer right. that you can use it but you need to keep your plants um, moist okay so if because if you don't once it dries out it gets hard and it's really really hard to re-wet and you're not going to get any help from that fertilizer so just keep them evenly moist and you'll get the use of the, the fertilizer that you, that you want okay Good. um the other thing is um if you've planted some new landscape plants, even last fall, because we've had a really dry May, right. um, make sure that you're doing a deep soak on those often enough, not just squirting them with the hose, but doing a deep soak all summer long into fall, waiting for the fall rains so that those new plants that you put in will survive. And really, they've got to remember too, all of us need to remember that a four inch annual does not have the root system of right. a five gallon right. shrub. Right, <laughs> exactly. So you need to make sure you're soaking it. And, and after you do that, dig down and see if you're really soaking it right. enough. Right, perfect. Um, the other thing for me, um, and not everybody, but be careful what you ask for in the garden as far as the size of the garden that you have, the maintenance that you're going to need to do. Right now, we're at the stage of changing expectations and downsizing. Right. So. This year I have the raised beds here by the greenhouse and and most of what I want in the vegetable garden is there. We have 15 other raised beds out in the back wow. and I'm only gonna plant four this year and I'm gonna start uh, filling in and or taking them out and uh, using the soil in other places and eventually go back to lawn back there and just have less. And you know, there. It, <laughs> I don't think that should make us feel bad. We no. should have those changing expectations. I want to still enjoy gardening. Right, yeah. And I don't want it to become a burden because right. it never has become a burden before. That's why I have my trusty weed <laughs> <I love> eater. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of crawling around on my hands and yeah. knees where the gravel is, I just, use, I just use the weed eater once in a while and it looks fine and it doesn't go to seed right. and um, I'm in better shape. So no shame just, in making some just changes. Just be careful about your expectations. Wonderful, wonderful indeed. I think we got it. And uh, then I wanted to know about, I've, we've had a lot of people lately say, uh, can I plant vegetables still? Can I plant? They can. Sure. We planted our latest here in the Willamette Valley. Our latest vegetable garden was June 22nd. Wow. And by September, you're not really sure that it, it doesn't make much difference yeah. in May <laughs> versus June. Uh, so yes, uh, green beans, plants, pepper plants, tomato plants, not too late. Get the short season varieties yeah. of the tomatoes so they they have time to ripen. And so some of the warm season squash, et cetera, will do just fine. Because they, they like hot weather from the start, so they're not right. going to be offended that you wait. No, because it's cool in, in May and in June, and so it right. waits for the warm weather to start to really show growth anyway. Well, there you have it. You know, we always thank you for your expertise, my friend. 
it's just some tips for this month, and we're going to do this all again next month with Jan. Okay, Thank you we'll so see much. what the lemon's doing. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> okay. <laughs>
So, oh, damage on the hose itself. Exactly. Oh, that makes complete sense. Yeah. And then, of course, there's always the little things that we put on hoses to spray water with. Tell me a little about those. Yeah, so it's really simple, right? But if you put one of these on the end of your hose, so just a hose nozzle attachment at the end, right? You're just going to um, allow your water to go right where you need it, right. but then also shut off when you don't need it. So. And I think, I think many of us, and I'm, I'm guilty of this, we forget that any time you can save and control water and where it goes, that is saving water. Yeah, exactly. So any of this stuff is really easy and really helpful. Yeah, and well, this is, you know, 10 bucks or less right, at a garden right. store or a lot of water providers will even give these out for free. Well, there you have it. You know, we have to pay attention to water. We're kind of spoiled in the Pacific Northwest. So for more information on these tips and great information altogether about watering, go to gardentime.tv we'll click you over to the Regional Water Providers Consortium. Penny, what a blast. Thank you so much, yeah, my friend. Yeah, thanks so much. Well, there is a great event happening at the Oregon Garden coming up next week, and I'm with Allie, and so Allie, this really has been going on for many years. Yeah, so this is our 14th year. It's always been called Oregon the Oregon Garden Brew Fest, right. um, but this year we changed it to the Oregon Garden Brew Camp oh, um, yeah. because we've expanded the event. It used to only be here in the forest, but we've actually expanded through the whole garden nice. and added camping so people can not only stay at the resort, but they can stay actually in the garden and camp here. And that is so great because you know your beer and spirits and other kind of alcohol and it's really safe to be right here and right. have a great time. Yeah, so I mean you can come for just the day but you can also stay the whole weekend and that's really what we're encouraging people because there's different stuff going on every day. We have a lot of great music acts and so you know you can't see them all in one day. You got to stay the whole weekend. Exactly and you can experience the whole garden because yes. you don't have to stay in one space like mm -hmm. in a beer garden. You can really take your beer and walk around. Right, so that's kind of the idea of this whole brew camp is you get your beer you can have your tastings um, but you can also buy like full glasses too and you can walk around the whole garden it's family friendly this year um, so you don't have to like find a sitter you just bring your whole family there's lots of stuff to do that is nice and Joe besides um, how many breweries are gonna be here yeah so we have a little over 40 breweries and um, we have over 90 beers ciders and meads wow wow so really it's not just for beer people so right. if you don't like beer there's all kinds of other things to taste yes there is and see uh, Seagram's is part of the event too yeah so Seagram 7 is one of our sponsors so they'll be doing sampling of um, their spirits ah. and then also I think it's cool that you have workshops and classes so there really is so much to do right I mean we can we have some pretty cool stuff here you can watch um, you know one of the people's coming here and using like his chainsaw and making some art out of that yeah. out of a big log um, we have like flower crown workshops um, some hop classes where you can actually learn how to grow and then make hop um, you know, make beer out of hop. Ah, that is cool. And then on Thursday night, there's an event too. Yeah, so that's our brewer's dinner. So that is um, like a beer pairing with a meal and you can come here. You can, that's a separate ticket though. Okay. Um, but it's pretty cool. A lot of the breweries all come to it and it's a really great event. Well, I think we're all gonna be hungry with all this. So <laughs> what about food? Yeah, so I mean, you can eat up at the resort, but you can also eat at any of our food carts. We have lots of great food carts here. Um, and even the resort has their own food cart area here too. So, I mean, you can get hot dogs, you can get burgers, everything. And how can we find out all this information? Yeah, so you can go to brewcampfest.com or the OregonGarden.org. Uh, well, what a great place to spend the weekend, have beer with your family, with your friends, and enjoy the Oregon Garden. So please go to GardenTime.tv. We'll click you over and you can find out all the information for this great event. Thanks so much. Thank you. Over the 30 years that our family has been in the nursery industry, we've learned that anyone can supply a customer with plants and garden supplies. But it's supplying those plants and supplies backed by a knowledgeable staff that can transform a garden and take it from ordinary to extraordinary. That's what we do at Sagawa Nursery. Why be ordinary when you can be extraordinary? Sagawa Nursery, growing beyond the ordinary. Since 1982, the wall has been making local gardens beautiful, naturally. Whether you need a new wall, concrete patio, fire pit, or driveway, the wall's expert craftsmen can build it. We back up our work with a five-year warranty so you'll know it'll last. We use the highest quality materials, including stamped colored concrete, natural stone, and we're the leader in using recycled concrete. Create an outdoor environment you'll enjoy for years with the help of your friends at The Wall. 
Welcome to Blooming Junction, where it's easy to connect with nature. At Blooming Junction, you'll find beautiful, healthy plants, good, fresh food, and a place to regain peace and calm in your life. We have an unsurpassed collection of unique and distinctive plants and the expertise to help any gardener be successful. And we feature Blooming Advantage plants. Come check out Blooming Junction for an inspiring experience in the garden or in the kitchen. Blooming Junction, offering quality plants for beautiful gardens. Two stages, 25 shows, one sweet weekend. It's the 26th annual Oregon Jamboree presented by Boulder Falls Inn, starring Brett Eldridge, Brantley Gilbert, Marin Morris, Low Cash, Jared Neiman, and Diamond Rio. One more day. Oregon Jamboree happening August 3rd through the 5th. Tickets and camping on sale now at OregonJamboree.com. I am at Margie's Farm and Garden for their wonderful event. It's called a Vintage Flea, and I'm with Kathy Jacoby. So, Kathy, there's always much fun things going on. Oh, there is. This is our fourth year here oh. at Margie's. Um, we're so excited to be back. This is our summer sale, so we've got 56 booths of... Wow antiques and collectibles, furniture, home decor, artisans, you name it, we've got it. And I love that you can get things maybe to put plants in. So what kind of things could they find? Oh, so we've got what we call pickers. They go out to all the estate sales and the garage sales and they find all that rusty, dusty junk that you don't have to look through and they bring it here. And they're, they're fabulous. You can find anything, get an old dresser, pull out the drawers, <laughs> put plants in it. That's a great idea. Oh, yeah, Never I think about so. those yeah, things. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, you're getting it for cheap. Yeah, why not do it? Put it out there. And then, really, it's undercover, so whatever the weather, people can come out. That's right. It's a great way to send, spend a nice uh, summer afternoon on a Saturday. Come on out. It's free admission, free parking. Ah, yeah. and then food, too, if we're hungry? Food, too. You bet. You can have lunch. we got to feed the vendors. Might as well feed the people that come, right? <laughs> and what are the times? It's from 9 till 5 on ah. Saturday, June 9th, today. Ah. So the name of your business is called A Vintage Flea. So is it just old stuff? Um, no, it's not. We've got our great uh, antiques and collectibles uh, vendors. And then also we've got handcrafted. We've got repurposed. Um, we've got soap vendors and bath spa stuff. We've got jewelry. We've got a uh, great uh, paper artisan. That's great. We've got a gal that makes barefoot sandals. Oh, wow. That's yeah, cool. They're like little beaded, so you can walk around barefoot but have jewelry on your feet. Oh, that is cool. Yeah. And then maybe something for dad because oh, that's coming up. Yeah, exactly. Of course. I mean, where else except a vintage flea where you would find great gift items for dad? No, that'd be fun. Yeah. That would be fun. Well, you know, you have all these containers and maybe that dresser that we were talking about, and you can put plants in it. So now I'm going to talk to Margie. And so what's going on in your part? Oh, yes. We still have a great selection here at Margie's um, for all your annuals, perennials. We've got trees and shrubs still. And and today only, we are doing 30% off all of our plants. And it's really not too late to plan because some oh, of us are really late this time. Yeah, oh, there's a lot of people who haven't started and we're totally fine. We've got you covered. Great. Lots of color and still plenty of time to plant. Uh, that is true. <laughs> Thanks for doing that. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> So if you have any other questions, please go to Gardentime.tv. You can get all the information about what's going on out here at Margie's Farm and Garden. Come on out for a lovely Saturday afternoon. Thanks so much. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. So I'm standing here with Mark and we are at Little Prince of Oregon, Mark, and you guys played a part of the Festival of Flowers, which happens over 30 years now. It's been happening at the Pioneer Courthouse Square. Tell me about this. So we were contacted earlier this spring about supplying some of the grasses for that display. And so if you, if you get a chance to go look at it, we supplied the Hakanakloa uh, macro areola, which is a variegated Japanese forest grass. We supplied Liriope um, Big Blue, which is a flowering grass wow. that, that we grow here. And so Little Prince is kind of known for growing plants with texture and, col and um, variegated colors. And so that's kind of what they came looking to us for. And you know, we're so used to, uh, well, we, so many of us have fallen in love with the plants that you guys create for us. And so we're so used to seeing them in garden centers and in gardens themselves, but this is a whole new venue, yeah. which is very yeah. exciting. Yeah, it is totally. And we're, we're happy to be part of something that's so big like this in Portland. Right. Portland's such an awesome city. 
and so we're delighted to help out with it. Well, there you have it. You know, you can go down this weekend and actually look at this really stunning design, which this year even includes some of the steps going up around the, the square. So it's a very beautiful thing. And then you can go, yeah, I'm going to get that. And then garden centers everywhere carry your stuff. Absolutely. So you can find those wonderful yep. plants and grasses in your garden centers. Thanks so much. We're yeah. very proud of you guys. <laughs> it's <Thanks>. delightful. <laughs> yeah. Every year there's an event called Portland's Best Rose and it's up here at the International Rose Test Garden in Washington Park. And so rose experts gather on this special day and pick the rose of the day. Well, that is one day that's just for rose experts, but the day before on the Grand Floral Parade Day is for the public to choose. Well, I'm with Rachel, the curator here at the Rose Garden, so tell us about that day for the public. Yeah, so like you said, if the Grand Floral Parade is happening that Saturday, you know you can come up here to the Rose Garden. Look for the flags, though will be the contestants, and you can go around and you can let your voice be heard as to what rose um, you think is the best. So, and so look for the flags and um, you can submit your vote. Excellent. Well, it's so much fun that the population can come up and choose your favorite. So make sure that you've, you come up to the Rose Garden on that day of the Grand Floral Parade. Thanks so much. Thank you. <laughs>
I've been training ever since. I, I love the trains. So um, we started this one in 2013, so we're relatively oh, very new. young. Wow. And a, really one of the smaller of the railroads that the club has. But we have a great time. We have a great time. Uh, it's basically built off of memories. I've got buildings named after my grandkids and oh, mines so named after my great nephews and, uh, you know, uh, all kinds of things that when I come out here and look at them, they're a little special. Uh -huh. special thing. What is the name of the railroad? Our railroad is MRTT. &T. It stands for Meyer, Randall, Town, and Todd, uh -huh. which are the last names of myself, my son, my son in laws. So it's really a family thing. That is good. And so then where is this base? Where is the, the town well, base? Well, I was raised in Oklahoma. So it, it's. It's lots of memories of, you know, uh, the, the root beer stand. I worked there when I was nine years old, you know. So the things I see out here uh, really, really take me home to my childhood. And really, you can see all these vignettes. Like there's a camping ground, and they even have like little um, outhouses there and barbecues. It, it's just so down to the details. We, one of the things we pride ourselves on is the, is the detail. Uh, lamp posts, street signs. Um, you know, we've got, one of the things we do is, is when the kids come by, we have these little pieces of paper that say, when, with my eye, I see. And there's like 10 or 12 things on it. And they get to go through and find them. And when they find them, they take them back to the beginning and they get some fruit snacks. Ah, and so what are those kind of ice spots? Oh, one of the things we ask them to look for is, uh, is uh, a hippie. Oh. Not many kids know what hippies <laughs> are, you know. Uh, we ask them to look for uh, a deer family or a bear with a, with a fish in his mouth. Oh, fine. You know, those kinds of things. And they love it, they love it. You see them running around with their pencil and their paper oh, looking for everything great. they do. Yeah, it's real fun. Well, we are a gardening show and there are plants in the railroad area. And so tell us a little bit about the plants. We have plants. One of the things we're restricted by are these three big maple trees. Not much wants to grow underneath a <laughs> right, maple right. tree, but hostas love it out here, they do. But my nephew, uh, Scott, he is the plant guy. He takes these little trees and puts little trimmings in of the bow and raises them up and then does, uh, I think they call it bonsai or something out of them and makes them look like real trees. Oh, they do. So they fit in well with the scale. Perfect. And with the little flake trees that we use as well, because <laughs> like say, it's a forest, right? <laughs> right. And really you're a beginner here. And so you you belong to the club. And so really you've learned a lot through be, uh, uh, being a member. I wished I had joined before I started. Uh. Because once I started, I found out like, like one of the guys said, what I shouldn't have done. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it, it's good news to have 25, 30 or more guys so you can call and say, how should I do this? And you get all kinds of ideas. Oh, sure. You don't make silly mistakes, which set you back. So, yeah, it's uh, we have a great time. Great camaraderie. The guys come over and help me this year do some stuff. And it's really, it was really a lot of fun. Mm. And so how do we get these books? How do we get 10? Um, these, the, the Garden Railroad book is sold at the hobby stores and at garden centers all over the city. Uh, you can pick them up from now till the day of the show. And uh, they sell for $10. And what this gives you is, is it gives you a list of every railroad in that's open that day, a map on how to get there. Oh, perfect. And you don't have to have one per person. Oh, Buy one car? book, put them, get your family, put them in a car, and go visit some railroads. It's just a, it's a real treat. Uh, and we have lots of sounds going on around here. So when you come here, you not only see, see things, you get to listen to them too. Uh, well, it makes it so inviting for you to come out with your family. It's Father's Day weekend. What a, what a fun way to spend the weekend with your dad and your family. So go to Gardentime.tv. We'll click you over and you can find out exactly where you can pick up the booklet and come see TJ and his railroad. Thanks You're so much. You're welcome to come see us. Thanks. Appreciate it. I am at Portland Nursery on Division Street with Sarah. And Sarah, there's a very special event happening today. What's going on? There is. It's our Bonsai Show event. Um, and it's happening from 10 to 3 today. So it's judged by the public. People can come out and vote for their favorite bonsai. And then um, it's a little late to enter, but that'll you know be the prize structure that we have for the people who did enter. Um, it's really fun to see all the different things that people do. And um, you know they're not all these special bones eyes. Some of them right. are, are just like people's fun projects and they just want to show That's what they've cool. been working on. So it's really for all levels of, of bones eye, um You have to start somewhere. Yes, exactly. You have to be a beginner. Yeah, and so the Bones Eye Society is here nice. and they're so knowledgeable and they're always looking for new members if anyone has an interest in, you know, bones eye. Um, 
But so if you have a bonsai at home, you can come and bring it to them. Um, answer que- They'll answer questions for you Wonderful. or help you maybe, you know, diagnose something, pot something up. So they're really happy to talk with people about bonsai. That is nice. But you have a wonderful display here, a wonderful you. selection. You have conifers, you have small plants, you have maples. And look at these big ones behind us. Yeah, very big. These are um, just so incredible to see. And um, it's really something that can, it's, it's an art form. It is, for oh, sure. very much. And it's really seeing a resurgence, which is really great. But we do have a lot of outdoor bonsai and indoor bonsai at this location, our Division Street location. Mm-hmm. Um, we don't have the indoor at, at our Stark Street, so this is really the place to come if you have an interest for bonsai. So Sarah, if you don't want to start from the beginning, I see some other more mature pieces here. Oh yeah, there are definitely so many showcase pieces that are gorgeous and showstoppers that you could take home and have just a very instant gratification right away. <laughs> um, they're beautiful. Yeah, it's definitely worth looking at. And I think it's cool that like if you have a little bit of interest to come and really get all that interest, all those questions answered and yeah. get you started on it because you really have everything here for that. Yeah, we really do and it's it's totally educational. If, if this is your first time then they you know, are happy to get you started with what you need because bonsais are different than a regular plant. Right, so, right. So they need a little bit of extra supplies and knowledge and all that. Yeah, and I think you take this, the fear out of it because it can be kind of scary. Mm-hmm. So you have somebody kind of hold your hand yeah. while you get started. <laughs> yeah, it is. Anything new, like orchids intimidated me for a long time or mm-hmm. you know, bonsai is intimidating for me <laughs> as well. But um, yeah, those different kind of those subcultures are, are hard. but with the knowledge and the festival, it's just really fun. Yeah. So um, come out and uh, from 10 to three today is our bonsai show. So just vote for your favorite. Excellent. Well, it is a great idea to come here and because of all the knowledge and all of the people here that are so experienced in bonsai, if you have any other questions, please go to Garden Time. We'll click you over their website and you can find out all the details to maybe start a bonsai today. Thanks so much. Thank you. Garden Time is brought to you by Portland Nursery, a passion for plants, a nursery for plant people. Do you want to be green? Do the easy stuff first. Hi, I'm Sarah from Portland Nursery. The U.S. House Energy and Commerce Committee says for every dollar spent on a shade tree, you can save $5 on cooling, blocking the penetrating heat in the summer and allowing the warm rays through in the winter. Dollar for dollar, there's no better energy and money saver than a good deciduous shade tree. Portland Nursery's professionals can help you make the perfect selection. Portland Nursery, a passion for plants, a nursery for plant people. When you plant your flower baskets and containers this year, consider Black Gold All-Purpose Potting Mix for the best results. This worm castings enriched, well-drained potting soil has a controlled release fertilizer to feed your plants up to six months. Black Gold All-Purpose Potting Mix now contains resilience for enhanced plant growth. Available at garden centers everywhere. For more information, visit blackgold.bz. All the riches of the earth. Join us for Berries, Brews, and Barbecue, now happening three weekends in June, featuring Oregon Craft Ciders and Brews and Barbecue. Enjoy barbecue. You pick strawberries, hay rides, live music, and much, much more. It's farm fun for the whole family at French Prairie Gardens. DRAM is celebrating 75 years of design and manufacturing of quality watering tools. DRAM products feature nine water patterns and are designed to nurture your plants with a shower of rain. DRAM for Lawn and Garden, available at garden centers near you. Well, for everybody that loves parades, we have a special sneak peek about the Rose Parade that's going on today. And I'm with Kendra, and you get to play with all the floats. How I fun. Do. I do, I do, I do. And thank you so much for inviting us in to see the behind the scenes on how all the beautiful floats get created. Well, thank you for coming. So explain to the folks, like, how much of the plant material has to be on a float? Every surface that the judges can see is covered with something that grew from a plant. And we can use it all. We can use the seeds and the roots and the shells and any part of a plant, but it has to have grown. 
That is so cool. So really, like this head right here of this cougar is just tremendous. Yes, yeah, she's getting just gorgeous. And this is Spirit Mountain. This is Spirit Mountain's float, which is going to be Mama Cougar and her two cubs. Oh. Absolutely precious. And so as much as you want cubs to be different, they're not full grown, but you still kind of want to use the same materials. But the variety is amazing. This is coconut palm fiber, and that's in its natural color. This has been dyed a little darker, same coconut palm. This beautiful nose is raspberry powder. Now, because it's a little darker, I suspect she's blended in blueberry powder, but <laughs> I don't touch it. I just right, right. tell her how wonderful it is. This incredible pampas grass has been picked apart and laid one little tiny sprig at a time. And her eyes, her eyes are amazing. These are amaranthus seeds. This is go uh, golden millet. And I don't know what that blend in the corner is. Something with some green in it. Some but. other kind of seed. But that is just tremendous. So. Just the ingenuity of it. And so just a little bit, like, when do you start on all this? We would like to start earlier, but people take a while to make their decisions. <laughs> of course, of course. And, and you cannot talk about a parade float before Christmas because people just, uh, that doesn't yeah, happen. No way. So January, we kind of start talking designs. We try to have them all designed by April. We've been building since April. Oh my and, gosh. But every bit of decorating, seven days. It's called Deck Week and seven days, that's all we have. Well, that must take a lot of volunteers. So talk about that. They, they make everything happen. Everything. And we do it in seven days. Wow. The ones that love it, come back. I bet. I only see smiling faces. Yes. If you're here, you've you stayed that long, you're probably having a good time. <laughs> well, there's another float that we can go look at, so let's go see love it. Love to. Excellent. Well, this is really cool, and this is the research float. And what is the theme this year? The theme is play happy. Oh, fun. And it's an otter, which, what a fun animal. They're so happy. <laughs> he seems pretty happy. And it's called Otter Bliss. Oh, that's Thank too you. cute. Too otter cute. Bliss. You were talking about what the judges see, and this is three-dimensional art, so really this is an incredible event here. Every, every surface that the judges can see is covered in organic material. But the important thing when we think about the view, much of the crowd is sitting on the street. Right. Some of them are in windows up above, so you gotta decorate for everybody. Oh my gosh. Now this float has so much going on. There's fish floating by, there's all kinds of stuff going on, and then I see these huge sea stars. Aren't they amazing? And this is the biggest one. This one's gonna be covered in preserved orange slices. We did the square footage, and I ordered a thousand orange slices. So. Hopefully the patient volunteers, but it makes an amazing texture. So what are the chances of people seeing this? I hope everybody comes to see <laughs> it. But, but people who can't, and they can't, you know, they're on display. These beautiful pieces, after the parade, we take them down to the waterfront on NATO Parkway, and they are on display. I think they're open until 9 o'clock that night, and the next day till 5 o'clock, and then we bring them back. So you have a chance to walk right up next to them and see these up oh, close. Oh, that is cool. So really, you can go to the parade, you can see it on TV, or you can go afterwards and see them right at the waterfront. So have a great time this weekend, and go see the parade. Thanks so much. Thank you. No matter what shade your green thumb is, you can find the plants and the help you need at Wavra Farms. We're filled with an astounding array of colorful plants to fill your garden. In addition to wonderful annuals and perennials, we are known for our hanging baskets. We also have all your garden essentials and we have great garden gifts too. From beginner to expert, you'll find something new and different with every visit. Wavra Farms, located off Highway 22, exit 5, east of Salem. Join us for Berries, Brews, and Barbecue, now happening three weekends in June, featuring Oregon Craft Ciders and Brews and Barbecue. Enjoy Barbecue. You pick strawberries, hay rides, live music, and much, much more. It's farm fun for the whole family at French Prairie Gardens. The health and beauty of your garden starts from the ground up, and healthy soils begin at Grimm's Fuel. For the best in garden mulch, blended soils, and bark dust, choose Grimm's. U-Haul delivered or installed, Grimm's can do it. And if you're looking for a new lawn, Grimm's can do that too with our special lawn installation service. Grimm's is also the area's largest recycler of yard debris. The foundation for a healthy garden begins at Grimm's Fuel. In the summer months, water use can double or triple due to outdoor watering. Here are three simple tips to help save water and money this summer. Set your sprinklers so that they're watering your lawn and plants and not the pavement. Water early in the morning or later in the evening when temperatures are cooler. Group plants with similar water, shade, and sun needs together. For more water conservation information and tips, check out the Regional Water Providers Consortium at www.conserveh2o.org.
Well, I am standing in a absolutely wonderful garden at Five Oaks Middle School, and I'm here with a couple of the teachers. And so I'm gonna let one of them explain what this is and how it's working. Uh, hi, Pat, how are you? Doing well, thank it's you. It's delightful to be here. So tell me about this amazing program and, and what it does. Uh, the garden is something that our school has uh, gotten together with the Oregon Food Bank with. And uh, it's an opportunity for our students to volunteer usually once a week, we're out here with oh. them. And they, plant, they harvest, they you know, put everything together and you know make sure that the food gets produced. And it's it's here at the middle school, but it's kind of a program within the middle school program, right? Is that right? Uh, our program, Rachel Carson, is within uh, the Five Oaks program, yes, uh, within the Beaverton School District. And so we come out here with our uh, students, about 45 students every Wednesday, and volunteer. So, Pad, you mentioned Rachel Carson. What, what does that mean? Uh, Rachel Carson's the environmental science program that we have in the Beaverton School District uh, so that kids uh, have an opportunity to learn science uh, as well as all their other subjects, but it's, a, it's an opportunity for them to go outside. It's an opportunity for them to learn in different environments. And it is, they, they come into this program by actually, it can be anyone in the district in the middle school that can come here and apply yeah, our, to be our here. Students, our students come from all over the district. Yeah, they apply to, to come to school here. and. Uh, um, we, you know, we try to get them outside as much as we can. Right, right. And so now I'm going to switch over here to you, Kendall. How are you, Kendall? Good, how are you? And tell me, why is this so beneficial to these, these younger students and what does it give them? Well, it gives them a real sense of connectedness with uh, obviously their environment and with the school, um, but also the sense of giving. And our program is uh, very community-based and all about service learning. And so right. we're out here, you know, every Wednesday. And it's great because students, the incoming sixth graders are out here in the fall and uh, we're planting cover crop, we're removing you know, the stuff that uh, we can't harvest. Um, and then they're here throughout the year. Then we're coming back periodically throughout the year. We'll start to plant, we'll start to remove the cover crop, we'll start to mulch, we'll spread wood chips like we're doing today and uh, filling uh, raised beds for more uh, planting. And what's, what's great is that uh, every year they, they harvest thousands of pounds of uh, produce it goes out uh, to the community, and so that I think the students get to see that full cycle piece right, and right. Uh, that they're contributing. So, Kendall, how many students are involved here? Well, currently we have about 45 working, and that's about how many we bring out uh, every Wednesday, as Pad mentioned. Uh, but in the program, we have 180 students, wow. um, and we have six teachers, uh, two math teachers, two humanities, two science teachers. Um, and something unique about our program is that our classrooms are blended grades. We have six, seventh, and eighth graders learning together, working together. Um, and so we're out here, um, and that just fosters all kinds of uh, really strong relationships and mentorship opportunities Excellent. for the kids. And you know, I, 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 before I came here, I read some background on the place. I, I, I read that the first year, I think it was like 1,400 pounds. Last year, 6,000 pounds that went to the food bank. It is amazing. It's truly amazing. And just every year they add on. The food, uh, Oregon Food Bank does a great job of, of supporting us, working with us, and allowing this opportunity for our kids. But it just grows by leaps and bounds every year. Excellent, excellent. So now what I'm going to do is take a couple minutes and go find some of the students that actually do all this work and gain all of this learning. Well, so now I'm with two students, uh, Kevin and Lucas, and I'm just going to talk to them about, you know, what was their motivation for this and what it's brought into their lives. All right, let's start with you, Lucas. So tell me, you know, this is your second year in this program, right? So wh why? What was it that you thought, I'm going to do this because it sounds good? Um, I mean, it really, it's about learning and what I can find out from this place. And then also it helps out a lot of people because all uh, produce is donated to the Oregon Food Bank to help support families in need. And that's, you know, that's, that's got to make you feel good. Yeah. Definitely. Because at your age, I know when I was your age, I wasn't mm -hmm. so kind-hearted. <laughs> so you've really stepped up and thought, not only can I learn about a certain type of science and chemistry in a garden, mm -hmm. but you really get to help people yeah, out. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And so what do you think? Are you going to be here next year? Next, uh, uh, next yes, year I will too? be here next year. Wonderful. Yeah. Now I'm going to switch over to Kevin because, Kevin, you actually have some history. Your brother graduated from this yeah. same program. What, what has it brought to you? Uh, this program is honestly just one of the most amazing things that I've ever been a part of in my life. I mean, we have such an amazing community that we right. build here with our fellow students and our teachers that I think, and all together we're making a difference for people in need, which is always something great that I, I love to be a part of. And you, you said that your, uh, your brother went through it and graduated, that was two years ago. You still, even when you graduate, because this is your last year here, mm -hmm. you still intend on coming back because you come back and volunteer in the summer and he still does that too. Yeah. Uh -huh. So it's is it, does that, 
does that make you become a wonderful gardener at home? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, we have some gardening at our house, yeah. but not too much. I wouldn't call it a garden. But now your yeah. your parents they know that that they can depend on you yeah. to put in the garden. <laughs> well, there you have some information about two of the people that that actually work here and are experiencing this program every day. So for more information on this in, really fascinating program, go to gardentime.tv. We'll take you over to their website. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Want to create something extraordinary? Create perfection. Thermidor's lifestyle appliances make it easy. Right now, save up to 8546 with our exclusive one two free event. Try before you buy in our live Thermidor kitchens. Oregon based and family owned, setting the standard since 1947. Standard TV and appliance. I'm Barb Bauman, and we're here today in the kitchen at Bauman Farms, and we're going to make some of our fresh strawberry jam, and we're going to make freezer jam made out of our fresh picked strawberries. But the same thing can be used for any other berry that we grow throughout the season. We're just going to show you how to follow the recipe. So what we're going to do today is get all the ingredients ready to make our strawberry jam. This one's simple. It includes the box of pectin, some fresh lemon juice, and some sugar, and of course your strawberries. Now we take our strawberries that had the stems on, we're gonna remove the stem, all the stem, and we're gonna put them in a colander and run fresh water over them, swirl them around and get them nice and clean. Then we're gonna take those strawberries and we're going to put them in, and I like to use a kettle. It has nice square edges down the side and you're gonna take and you're gonna mash up the fruit until you get just a pulpy consistency. Nothing hard to do about that. Now that we've got our berries all in our kettle here, we've used the potato masher and it takes about one to two minutes just to get a nice consistency. Then we're gonna add our fresh squeezed lemon juice. I've got a quarter cup here I'm adding to the berries. And you wanna blend that right in with the, with the smashed berries. Then the next thing that we're gonna do is start adding our pectin. And it's always a good idea to go nice and slow on adding the pectin, not all of it at one time. Just keep blending in just a little bit at a time. Add a little more, blend it in. I'm gonna do a little bit more. And remember, use the whole package. This is no time to scrimp and try and save to make an extra batch. You wanna measure exactly like the recipe says to make sure that your jam turns out nice and sweet. This is the pectin that I like to use. This is what my mom used and this is what I grew up knowing how to make strawberry jam. It's MCP. It's a product of SureGel and we have it available in our farm market year round. Now I want you to keep stirring and we're going to stir this every five minutes till we got 30 minutes on the clock done and that will make sure that the pectin is thoroughly dissolved in our jam. Now that our pectin is set for the 30 minutes, just like the recipe says, we're gonna go ahead and add our sugar now. I've removed the potato masher that I used to crush my star strawberries and I went to using a spatula. That way you can get every little corner and every little bit stirred in with the sugar. And I know this looks like a lot of sugar, but this is exactly what the recipe says. Pretty soon, it takes about ooh, five more minutes of stirring. We get all that sugar dissolved. Then we're gonna be able to have a taste test and get it put in our jars. Now we've got this sugar pretty well stirred in here. And what we're gonna do is take a little sample. The, the texture between your tongue and the jam will let you know whether or not the sugar is dissolved. Mmm, that's delicious. We're ready to put it in the jar. Okay, so now we're ready to put it in our jar. And jar, yes, I prefer a glass jar. It's reusable and easy to clean. Make sure you run them through your dishwasher before you put your jam in them. All we have to do is pour into the jars. And you can see, this is taking about one cup of jam. And our recipe here today is gonna make seven cups of jams. So seven of this size jar, or we can put it into our pint, which would make three and a half. And putting it in my glass jar, I'm going to leave one half inch headspace because I'm going to freeze it in my freezer. Now we're going to fill up our jars. Remember to leave that half inch headspace. 
put your lid on it and make sure you mark it so you can keep track of it. Frozen berry jam is good up from one to two years. For more information and great tips, just go to our website, www.baumanfarms.com. Extend your growing season and escape to your own garden retreat in a Solex greenhouse from the Greenhouse Catalog. There is nothing like the taste of a bright, red, juicy, homegrown tomato. The bright, warm, durable design of a Solex greenhouse provides plenty of room to nurture your plants and enjoy your passion for years. Choose from five Solex greenhouse models or build your own with Solex panels. For all your gardening, greenhouse, and specialty growing needs, visit GreenhouseCatalog.com or give us a call. At Garland Nursery, you'll find top quality plants, four generations of garden know-how, fun and fantastic garden decor, and the best in garden supplies. Come visit us at Garland Nursery. Since 1937, inspiring beautiful and bountiful gardens. Well, I can tell you I am thrilled to be at a brand new restaurant here in Lake Oswego called Pizzeria Sulago, and I am with Kara here. And Kara, you actually do a lot of the produce growing here, and you're from Vibrant Valley Farm, correct? Mm -hmm. Tell me about this and, and why these are picked at this time of year and what's he planning to do with them? So it's early spring, so right now we are working with a lot of leafy greens, um, items that do well in cooler weather. Right. Um, this is a way to kind of jumpstart us into the uh, warmer weather things like basils and tomatoes sure. and melons. Uh, so here we have uh, flowering cilantro, lovage, a lot of herbs, um, uh, kale shoots, kale, which we grow almost 600 plants solely for this restaurant wow. alone. Wow, wow. Um, favas, um, another plant as a farm, you want to try to grow, be able to capture as much of the plant as possible. So the greens, the flowers, and the pods are all something that we can utilize and sell to folks like Nick. And the great thing about working with you is that you actually can work with the chef on things that they want and then even offer the ideas. Like, I tell me about what this is, because I heard you offering this without the flowers, but with yeah. the pods. Yeah, so this is when um, it's Sherville, which is a chef favorite. Um, this is a very, very cold weather plant. So it goes from an herb to a uh, flower and then it starts to put seed pods out right. um, and every single phase of this plant has an excellent flavor so it can complement something like a pizza or a salad or even people put it in cocktails. Wow, I mean, yeah, wow. And the great thing is now you can come in and say to him, you know, I've got these, look, I have these pods yeah. out. So that really opens up his opportunities mm -hmm. as a chef to create a lot of unique and wonderful flavors even more than he yeah. already does. Since I've met Nick uh, like four years ago, it's always become, it's always been a dialogue right. so if it's if whatever's going on it's just a conversation and I think that's how these relationships become um, really solid and something to rely on and something that you're excited to be a part of well and speaking of the chef we're gonna take a break I'm gonna walk into the kitchen we're gonna talk to him a bit about this well I have found my way back into the kitchen and now I'm with chef Nick Ford and tell me Nick what was this concept how did this come about to you uh, so Pizzeria Sul Lago is a pizzeria on the lake down in Lake Oswego, um, and it is focused on farm fresh ingredients and seasonality. And that really meant having to find someone like uh, Kara, who, who would work with you and get that and make sure that that stuff is local and it's fresh and it's right here when you need it. Yeah, restaurants that operate like this are a lot about relationships and right. meeting people like Kara, knowing people like Kara, and that really has a huge impact on what the restaurant is as well. And I would think, Nick, that, and I'm not a chef at all, but I would think to be creative and to come up with fresh flavors and combinations and all that stuff that amazing chefs like you do, you would have to really have someone like that to help bring this kind of produce in to you. Yeah, and it's also working through the seasons too and, right. and figuring out when vegetables are at their prime and, and what way to utilize them. Like coming into springtime now with all this beautiful greenery that we have coming about, it's it's best raw, lightly dressed, and you just so, get to... Let me get this up here for you. What what do you think this, what are you gonna do with this? Like, do you, did you have a concept before you got all of this? Uh, yeah, so this is all gonna go on a strawberry pizza that we do. So it's just gonna be a pizza crust that's baked with a little bit of garlic cream, um, hot capicola and mozzarella cheese. And then when it comes out, we'll pick all of these vegetables and make a nice salad out of wow. it and just top the pizza with a nice and fresh salad. you said strawberries, right? Strawberries too. So yeah. I'm gonna let you guys get to work on that and then we're gonna come back when it's all done. 
see what it looks like and have a taste of it. Awesome, sounds Thanks, great. Mate. Thank you. Okay, so to me, Nick, this looks like a delicious pizza and a wonderful salad, but tell me about what this really is. So this is actually a bunch of product that Kara uh, grows for us. So we have some fresh kale, some fresh dill, um, chervil flowers, edible flowers, strawberries, pea shoots, and some fava beans as well as fava greens. Um, so this is actually going to be the topping for the pizza. Wow. So wow. that pizza crust is baked with a garlic cream sauce, mozzarella cheese, hot capicola, and then this is just gonna get dressed with a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. Wow. Some sea salts. And then just a light mix on it. And then it's just gonna go right on top of the pizza like so. Well, I'm gonna so let you way. finish this up and yeah. then you've got some other, uh, other things, some other dishes that you're gonna bring out, some plates you've made for us, and we're gonna look at all of these wonderful meals together, okay? Sounds great, thank you. Okay, so I'm sitting here now, and we have fresh produce, we have fresh food, and we came out from doing the pizza, Nick. So tell me what these are, and tell me a little bit about them. So we have a rotating salad and vegetable section on the menu here. Um, we have a roasted asparagus with rhubarb and some whipped uh, fromage blanc. We have our signature kale Caesar salad from Vibrant Valley Farm, sugar snap peas with fregola and marinated pecorino toscano, and then also fresh pastas as well. And as delicious as these all sound, I would eat them every day, every year, but you guys really change things up because of the produce that you get constantly. Yeah, in the warmer months, we'll do it daily to almost weekly. Wow, and then I love too that you have, you have great wines. Tell me a bit about those. So we offer a um, wine program that is Italian grape varietals that is grown in the Pacific Northwest, wow. and we also have a bottled cocktail section. And I love that you serve the cocktails in these bottles. That's yeah. adorable. And then also, tell me your hours. We're open seven days a week, 11.30 to close. Wow, that's, that's a lot of opportunity. So, you know, for more information, if you love great food, if you love great wine, if you love great cocktails, go to gardentime.tv. We're going to click you over to their, both of their websites so you can find out about the produce and about the wonderful food. And thank you both so much because this, thank this you. is delicious and delightful. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. We want to thank you for watching today, and we want to tell you we had a blast watching all these floats being put together. And if you want to see the finished floats after the parade, you can go to City Fair through Sunday afternoon. We also wanted to tell you that another great blast we had was spending time with all of you that came out uh, at the Subaru Garden Days in Capital Subaru in Salem. We really had a great time. And for more information about today's show or any past show, you can always go to gardentime.tv. We thank you for the kindness of your time today, and we look forward to doing this all again next week right here on Garden Time. Garden Time is going to Europe, and you can join us. Join Garden Time as we tour gardens in London, Paris, and Belgium. See world-famous gardens like Hampton Court, Kew, Sissinghurst, and Great Dixter, and Monet's Water Lily Garden in France. We'll also see sites in London and Paris, like the Tower Bridge and the Eiffel Tower. We'll also stop in the Champagne area of France, tour a Belgian brewery, castle gardens, and a winery. We'll also have a river cruise. Our final stop is a visit to the floral carpet in Brussels. We'll be staying in four-star hotels with 24 of your meals and your airfare included. Visit the Garden Time website and click on the tours link for all the details. And we'll see you in Europe. The proceeding was a paid program of the Gustin Creative Group and its sponsors.